praise you tonight, O oh Lord. I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of God. I'm glad to be in your presence tonight, Lord. I'm honored to be in your presence tonight, Lord. I'm thankful to be in your presence tonight, Lord. There is no one like you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of God, isn't it? Amen. Turn to a couple people around you. Tell them it's good to be in the house of God with you today. Thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you what, I'm going to have you be seated for just a moment. Once the young people, once the young people get done with their, with their music, they're going to be heading in here, sitting up front, and, um, and they're going to join us for tonight. We tried to, last week we tried to kick them out and make them watch a the screen. They revolted and didn't like that, and so we've allowed them in the sanctuary tonight teasing we uh want them to be able to be together and uh trying to give every opportunity we can for that and uh tonight is a exciting night it's a monumental night uh they're going to begin to pass out these books right here while i'm while i'm talking a, a couple points here uh uh quickly you're gonna you're gonna get one of these books um everybody say check-ins how many of you have the Church Center app on your phone? If you, yeah, most, most everybody. That's awesome. Um, if you have yet to download the Church Center app on your phone, we would encourage you to do that. Um, it would be a benefit to you for several reasons. One of them being gives you an opportunity to set up online recurring giving. Uh, it gives you uh, access to our directory, our groups, uh, our calendar, it gives you access to any events that have open registrations. And, um, and so it would be a benefit to you. But the purpose of me talking about this tonight is there is there's something on there called check-ins. Everybody say check-ins. Uh, check-ins is just a way for you to say, I've checked into the Anchor Church. How many of you have ever checked in somewhere on Facebook? Yeah, yeah, every, pretty much everybody, a lot of people. And uh, this is a way that you can check in and say, I'm at the Anchor Church tonight. That way we know you're here. And for this particular series we're going through, we're going to track who all has been through first steps. And so we would like to have this information on hand that you have completed first steps because everybody that's a part of this church is going to complete first steps. Everybody that's involved that, that, that calls this their home church. This is, this is the, the, the class that, that we are going to do. And we're going to do that over the next four weeks. And I hope, uh, I hope that, uh, I hope that you'll be here and, uh, uh, for that. But so, so when you come in, if you will just click on the church center, you hit the more tab, it's all the way to the bottom, right, hit check-ins and then you just check beside your family's name and then you hit check in and then that's it, you're done. And so that would be a great help to us in, in, uh, in uh, tracking and uh, we would uh, greatly appreciate that. Sister Hyden, did I say all of that right? Amen, all right, all right. Our young people are making their way in right now. Would you give them a hand as they come in? That's your cue to walk faster, young people. That's, that's your cue to walk faster. Let's give them a hand. Let's give them a hand. Come on in here. Take a seat. We have allowed you into the sanctuary tonight. <laughs> Y'all didn't have to move. You're all right. You're all right. Man, look at all these young people. It's awesome. This is great. This is great. So I, I've, got a, I've got a task for you before I start. I need you. This is now, listen, if this is, if this is up to a man in the house, this isn't going to happen. But I need some ladies in the house to help me for the next four weeks. Are you ready? I need you to, I need you to look at me and pay attention. I need you to bring this book for the next four Wednesdays. Can you do that? 
If you can do that, say, I can do that. Some of you men are offended, like, what do you mean, I can do that? No, you can't. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> uh, bring, bring this book for the next four weeks. We're going to be teaching out of this book for, for, the next, for the next month. So bring that. If you, if you come and you forget it, that's all right. We are going to have extras available in the bookstore for purchase uh, for five bucks if you forget your book and, uh, and you'll get an F on your test. And uh, that wasn't very funny, but uh, just bring your book. Turn to your neighbor, say, bring your book. Bring your book, bring your book, bring your book. <laughs> I, I want to refresh, I want to refresh our memory before we dive into, we dive into the first lesson of, of first steps tonight, John chapter nine and verse, let's start with verse one. Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind, everybody say blind, from his birth. His disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither, neither. Somebody say neither. This man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. That's an, another message for another day. Verse 4, I must work at the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Verse 6, <clears throat> when he had thus spoken, he sat on the ground, he made clay in the spittle, he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went, he went his way therefore and washed and came seeing. It's interesting that the light of the world brought light to this man's eyes. And, uh, and uh, uh, be seated, let, let me remind you for just a moment on where we are. There was, some of y'all are laughing because you were, there was a couple standing in the back. Don't make fun of me, don't judge me right now. John nine, Jesus encounters this blind man sees that he's hurting, struggling, lost, blind. Life is dark. Have you ever been there before? Dark, it's, uh, it's, it's just dark. Jesus encounters him, see that, sees that the man is blind, anoints his eyes with clay, and he says, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. He sent this man, this blind man. <laughs> Find the humor in this with me for a moment. He sends, he anoints this man with clay in his eyes and says, now go and walk to the pool of Siloam and wash yourself. He's blind. He don't know, he probably, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but if I had to guess, he probably wouldn't know where the pool of Siloam is to save his life. He, he said, he's, he's instructed, go to the pool of Siloam and wash, and, and we can infer from that that he was probably led there. He was probably carried there, but the point of, of the story tonight is that when he got to the pool of Siloam, he got to a place that was attainable. For a blind man, for a blind man to walk by a body of water uh, is not smart. For a blind man that cannot see where he is going to walk by a deep pool of water is not the most intelligent thing to do. You would be concerned if you saw a blind man walking, uh, walking on the ledge by the Y bridge where that waterfall is and that parking lot is up. You would be concerned if you saw a blind man there. Why? Because you worry. I don't know if he can, I don't know if he's going to be able to navigate this terrain and stay out of the dangerous 
water. Am I making sense right now? You would be concerned about that. But the pool of Siloam was unique. It was, it was, pastor taught us this September, I believe 22nd of last year. And it's so powerful. Go, go back and watch the, uh, um, uh, the shallow end of the pool he preached on, uh, on that night. And, and, um, the pool of Siloam was unique in that it was, it was said to be around the size of two Olympic swimming pools. It was beautiful, clear water that was fed by what was known as Hezekiah's tunnel that filtered water in. And, and uh, it was this amazing feat. There was another pool called the Pool of Bethesda known to be around 13 meters deep. And uh, that pool was just a drop off. If you stepped into that pool, you were going 13 meters down. But if you went to the Pool of Siloam, you would go to a pool with steps. Steps. Everybody say steps. In 2004, in Jerusalem, there was a sewage break, and, and they began to dig down. And, and when you dig down in Jerusalem, you don't just go with uh, the sanitary folks. You go with ar an archaeologist as well because of all of the artifacts that are there. And they began to dig and found uh, the remains of the Pool of Siloam. This was just... Just not, not, not but less than 20 years ago that they found the pool of Siloam. And if you were to go to that pool, you would, uh, as a blind man, you would not be forced with trying to make the effort of navigating how to wash in a pool of water that just drops off. The, 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 it, it's so neat. I, I read an article just, just today from, from the Seattle the Seattle Times, I think, I didn't even know that was a thing, but Seattle has a Times too. It says, it says when they dug it up, it had three tiers of stone stairs. Watch what the writer says. Allowing easy access to the water. <laughs> so this blind man that is being led to this water is not being led to a place that is unattainable, Brother Zion. He's being led to a place that makes it possible for even somebody that is blind to get down in and wash. Steps makes the pool attainable. And what I'm trying to tell us tonight is that just because somebody is in the shallow end of the pool does not make it a less significant part of the pool. You might be in a shallow end, but you're touching the same water, honey. You might be in the shallow end, but the same spirit that's in the deep is is the spirit that's in the shallows. We have a Jesus that has made this gospel and this life attainable. He has made it possible, not for just those who have been in church, be seated, such as myself, but he has made it possible for those who have been blinded by the, by the world that they have lived and that they have come out of. The Lord has made it possible for those who have never tasted and never known of his spirit to be able to step in one step at a time. I'm going to tell you right now, we serve an attainable God. He doesn't expect you to get it all in one moment. He doesn't expect us to be able to live it all and, and do it all and say it all and dress it all in just one week. You hear me and you hear me well. We cannot become so consumed in law that we lose the spirit of the law. God came to fulfill the law by his spirit and we are a body of believers that that says I was once blind but now I see I was once in a dark world but it was made available to me it was made available to me it wasn't hard it wasn't difficult it was just one step at a time there is a place in the pool for those that are blind he was he was healed by Jesus. Y'all okay for a moment? 
He was healed by Jesus, pressed afterwards, pressed by the Pharisees. Who healed you? What happened? Tell us what happened. They pressed him. They called in his parents. They interviewed them one after another. And they, he said, listen, listen, you can, you can ask me all of this stuff. He said, all that I know is that I used to be blind, but now I see. I can't explain the doctrine. I can't explain the, I can't explain the typology. I can't explain everything that there is to know about that water. All that I know is when I stepped into it and I washed, I was blind, but now I see. There is a place in the pool for people that can say, all that I know is Jesus touched me. All that I know is I was an addict and I'm not anymore. All that I know is I struggled in my marriage and I'm not struggling anymore. All that I know is Jesus touched me. There is a place in this church for people that do not have the knowledge that you have of God. I'm going to tell you right now, this is a church, a man, that is built upon restoring people, restoring lives to a greater purpose. And when we buy into that vision, we also open up our pews for people who are broken and hurting and need it one step at a time. We are in a place that believes you don't have to get it all right away. Just keep walking. Just keep going. Just keep taking steps. You're going to get there. It's not going to happen overnight. It's the same spirit. And we believe that first steps out of this message, out of the message that pastor preached, go back and watch it, out of the message, that message came, this program that we are talking with you about tonight. We are giving an opportunity Let's just read it. First page, page one. Welcome to the family. That's exciting. Come on, clap your hands. Welcome to the family. Let's read this. This is about the only thing I'm going to read word for word tonight, so pay attention. First steps is where your journey to the Anchor Church membership begins. Explore church history and see what we believe as a family of faith. Discover your specific giftings and personality traits that shape your place in the kingdom of God. Finally, uncover all the areas where you can make a difference at the Anchor Church. So whether you're outgoing or introverted, loud or quiet, longtime believer, or just taking your first step into a relationship with Jesus Christ, there is a place for you here. We believe everyone has a next step to take in the kingdom of God. The Anchor Church First Steps is where you can discover what that next step is in your own life. Together with our members of the Anchor Church family, you can step into a deeper relationship with Jesus and discover the purpose and calling that he has for your life. So let's grow together. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Now... I'm instructed with walking you through le- uh, lesson one tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skim through lesson one because we have covered a lot of this ad nauseum in the past couple months. I don't know if ad nauseum is a word, but I just said it. Page seven. John 10, I'm come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Welcome to First Steps. Uh, it says in that paragraph, today was designed to clearly explain who we are and what we value. That's the center of lesson one. First steps guide you to discover your purpose in the life of God created for you. First steps is made up of four steps. Everybody say four steps. That equip you to follow Jesus, connect to the church, discover your purpose, and serve others. You can see there, there's step one, who we are. Step two, those are the, those are the different lessons that we will be going through over the next uh, four four weeks. Uh, let's, let's move on. Let's, let's move on. Page nine, Ephesians chapter one and verse 17. This is our prayer for everyone that goes through this class, which you're going through right now. 
which makes me Mr. Up to Grave, your teacher. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know, everybody say no, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. That's our prayer, prayer for you. Let's read, let's, let's, take a look at, let's take a look at our story here. When Pastor Aaron Bounds came to the Anchor Church, I, I, I told a lie again. I'm going to read a little bit more than I said I was going to read. When Pastor Bounds came to the Anchor Church, he envisioned a church where people could be healed, restored, and connected to a place where they can belong and ultimately fulfill the purpose for which they were created. From that guiding principle, the vision of the Anchor Church has become clear, restoring people to a greater purpose. Have you heard that statement lately? Whether reaching out to the unchurched community, creating programs to help our members live more abundant lives, or establishing a new campus somewhere in the world, everything that we do here at the Anchor comes from our vision to see people restored to a life of hope, joy, and purpose. That's why we turn the lights on, folks. Today, over 2,000 people attend our services throughout Ohio and international campuses. God is doing great things at the Anchor Church. We invite you to see for yourself how exciting church can be when the focus is simple and people are free to go after God with passion. That is the story of the Anchor Church. What is your story? How, how do we, how am I restored how am I restored to a greater purpose in my life? The process of this is simple. It's threefold. Love, grow, and go. Love God and love people. You've got to grow in faith, and then you go and save the world. This is how you can be restored into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And this makes up the DNA of our church. We restore people to a greater purpose. Clap your hands if, you, if you're thankful for that. So, let's break down the steps. We have covered this for weeks now, but we need to hear it to learn it. Somebody say, we learn by repetition. We learn by repetition, so we're gonna get repetitive tonight. Our vision is restoring people to a greater purpose. How that vision is restored is through these three steps. Number one, love God and love people. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said the greatest, he said the greatest uh, commandment in all of scripture is love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy strength, the mind, thy strength. And he also said the second is like unto it. He said, and love thy neighbor as thyself. How do we love God and love people? The way that we do that here at the church is twofold. We attend services. Everybody say, we come to church. We, we believe that it is vital for, for, for the body of Christ to come together at church. At our services, let, let's scroll back here. Attending services under that. Our love for God is not confined to any one day of the week, but we express it publicly on Sundays and Wednesdays as a family of believers. We set aside these days to emphasize our love for God through worship and community. At our services, we worship. Scripture tells us in Psalms 150 and 1 that we praise God in his sanctuary. Number two, at services, we connect. We connect with the body of Christ. Scripture says that only iron can sharpen iron. So when we connect with one another, we grow stronger. Are y'all getting this? This is the biblical foundation of why it is necessary to attend church. Number three, we hear. We hear the preached word of God. Scripture tells us in Romans 10 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Of God. Number four, when we come to church, we pray together. It's important to pray in private, but there's something altogether different when we pray together. In Acts 4, when a group of believers gathered in a second floor room, the place was shaken 
by their prayers. That's some, there's something happens, that happens when we gather together and we pray. The second way that we love God and love people is we can complete first steps, which you are doing tonight. Well, well done. One another is found 59 times in the 27 books of the New Testament. Jesus wants us to know the responsibility we have one to another, that we should care for one another, serve one another. But how do I do this? First Steps answers these questions. First Steps journey is where you can discover the unique gifts God has given you and how you can use those gifts to serve others. So in First Steps, we learn, we learn about how we can serve one another by discovering our gifts and uh, by discovering the gifts that God has given us and how we can use them to benefit one another. That is the purpose of First Steps. And that is, that is how we love people. By learning how we can serve one another. That is the purpose of this. Step two, we grow. Somebody say grow. We grow in faith. How we do that here, we join a small group. We join the dream team. We, we find it very important that we join a small group. I, I, I talked about this last, I believe it was last Wednesday, I talked about this. It is important that we come together in small groups. Bible tells us in Acts chapter 2 and 46 that they continue daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. They, they, they ate their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. It says they broke bread from house to house. Acts 5.42, they met daily in the temple and in every house. In Acts 20.20, 20, he said, I have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. Paul said that to those who were listening. He said, uh, he said, I have taught you from house to house. And here's why we feel that, is it, that it is imperative for us to, to be a part of a small group. And I'll remind you that our small groups are opening up on March the 28th. It's gonna be very, very awesome. Small groups provide opportunities for Bible study, for fellowship, for prayer, for support, and for outreach. That's why small groups at this church exist. Let's go on to page 12. It gives you details of, of how our small groups are, are going to work. They're free market groups. You can choose what group you wanna be a part of. We have semesters every year, so we have a beginning date and an ending date. This, this upcoming small group semester will be March 28th through the end of May. Why did we put an end on it? Because we understand that, that something that goes on forever kind of loses, can lose, can lose value. Um, and so we, we have put a cap on it to make sure that uh, it's fresh and, and, and to be able to grow in different areas and do different things. And so we have semesters for that reason. Number three, you can host a group. Not only can you be a, a, a part of a group, but the hope is that you can eventually lead a group and grow your group and reach the community around you. So that is a way that we grow in our faith. We attend a small group. Number two is we join the dream team. Everybody say dream team. How many of you have seen those dream team masks all around? Dream team is, the dream team is the volunteer army of this church. The Anchor Church Dream Team is the core of our church. Every person who serves in any of the Anchor Church ministry teams is a part of one team, which is known as the Dream Team. Let's go on, step three. So we love, we grow, and everybody say we go. How, this is how we are restored. We love, we grow, and we go. We go, thirdly, we go and save the world. We do that couple ways, by reaching our circle and leading a small group. The last thing Jesus said to his disciples, as he ascended into heaven, was to go and teach. Being a disciple of Jesus means reaching to the people around us, 
family, friends, and neighbors, anyone in our circle of contact. Mark 16, 15, he said to them, go into the, all, all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You, as an individual, do not have the ability to go into all the world. You have the ability to go into a part of the world. And when you do your part, and I do my part, and, and the church and the people in Coshocton and Cambridge and McConnellsville and Vietnam and Guatemala and all of these churches begin to do their part, we are able to, to reach a world with the gospel when we do our part in reaching our circle. We get frustrated when we try to operate out of what God has called us to do. There's, there's no more frustrating place to be than out of the will of God. Uh, let me stop here for a moment. There, there's, no more, there's no worse place to be in the world than out of the will of God. And the goal of, this play, the goal of these lessons, so next week you're going to take a personality test. You're going to take a spiritual gifting test. Why? Because we want where you are serving to be somewhere that you are gifted to serve and to somewhere where you are passionate to serve. What good is it to have somebody that is serving in a place that they hate? Have you ever, have you ever ordered food from a place or from a person that hated their job? <laughs> Today. Hi, welcome to Taco Bell. What, what in the world can I get you? <laughs> what mistake with your health would you like to make today? Yeah, I'll take, never mind. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, steak fajitas. They, uh, they just don't, they just don't, they don't like the job. And we don't want that here. Hi, welcome to the Anchor Church. Glad you're here. <laughs> Seats over there. <laughs> what, a hor what a horrible place. <laughs> Glad you're here. Don't care. Oh, you got family here. That's wonderful. Hope, hope you, hope you, hope you find them somewhere in this big old building. There, I don't, I can't tell you where they are. Enjoy your stay. That'd be terrible if people walked into the building and encountered a bunch of grumpy people on the way in. That's not the will of God. We don't want you serving somewhere where you don't want to serve. Let me set you free right now. If you don't want to serve where you are serving, you are here. Now, hang on, y'all. Hang on. Hear me all the way out. Hear me all the way out. Uh, you are hereby relieved of duty. Just remember that you can, sometimes where you're gifted can be frustrating and you can have to grow in that and grow in your gifting and in your calling. So that process can be frustrating. But if you're gifted about it and you're passionate about it, when you're frustrated, you'll stick it out. When you're frustrated, you'll still have a smile on your face. When you're growing, you'll still say, this is where I want to be. This is where I belong. This is who I am. We don't want you to serve somewhere you hate serving. Amen. Somebody say thank you. You're welcome. God bless you. And so, I don't know how I got on that. I'm, I'm supposed to be on lead a small group. But uh, number two, under Go Save the World, you can lead a small group. Now, like I said before, you're not just a part of a small group. You're leading a small group, and you are growing the kingdom of God. Page 14 reiterates our vision and our system. Restoring people to a greater purpose. And our system is the way that we do it. If the vision is the eyes of the church, the system is the legs of the church. It's how we get there. Now, page 16. This is about the end, y'all. Turn to your neighbor and say, well, that was easy. Page 16, the Anchor Church Membership Covenant. At week one of First Steps, we introduce the membership covenant. We are not forcing anybody who walks into our building for the first time and attends First Steps to commit to weekly giving. <laughs> We're not forcing anybody to make that kind of commitment. But if there is a heart 
to uh, a desire to become a member of the church. We make this available from week one and, and hopes that by the time somebody is plugged in, uh, before somebody is plugged into a team, they can say, you know what? This church is my home. This is my place. This is where I want to serve God. This is where I want uh, to be a part of the family of God. Does that make sense? So, so this is the membership covenant that we introduce in week one. By uh, being in agreement with the values and ideas presented in first steps, I'm now ready to unite with the Anchor Church uh, family. In doing so, I commit myself to God and to the other members to do the following. I'm just going to read the numbers here. Protecting the unity of the church. Number two, sharing the responsibility of my church. Number three, fulfilling the purpose of my church. And number four, supporting the testimony of my church. Why, why, why do we make this available? Why do we make this available here? I'll tell you why. Because you don't have to have it all together to call this your home. Tell me the last time you said, I, I, I can't tell you the last time I told Winston. Uh, I've never, matter of fact, I've never said it before and I probably won't say it until he's 30. I, Winston, and, until, until you get, get your act together and you learn how to clean your, your room right and, 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 and put your pants on right and do all this stuff, you, you're not welcome in the house. How cruel. I would never say that to my child. Why do we introduce an opportunity for membership from the get-go? Get because just because they don't have it all together and they don't know A, B, C, D, E, F, G doesn't mean they can't call this home. Doesn't mean they can't, they can't come every week and say, this can be home from the get-go. This can be home from where you might have been blind and now you see and you don't know anything else. Welcome to the Welcome to the Anchor Church. Welcome to a place that believes in revival. Welcome to a place that's going to see the greatest end time harvest that this world has ever seen. We're going to see it. I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to see it. We're going to see I need somebody to stand to your feet with me right now. We are going to see broken people brought to this house, restored and made whole in God again. Clap your hands if you believe that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Be seated. Music come. I don't know how to wrap this up, to be honest. It says seven ways the first church revealed their love for God. You can, you can read that. You can go on and read that. And I know you just sat down, but go ahead and stand. You all right? Come on, you know you don't have all your steps in for the day anyway. I'm trying to help you. Some, I see some of y'all checking your watches right now, your Fitbits. <laughs> You're like, well, he's right. He's a prophet. You have just completed week one of First Steps. Are you excited about it? You look smarter. You do. I, I can tell. You, you just look smarter. Amen. 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 I, I'm so thrilled about this. And uh, I, hope, I hope this is going to be a blessing to you. Next week is going to be so amazing. It's, there's going to be some... Uh, there's going to be some time where we're doing a little bit of work and you're filling out some papers and personality tests and spiritual giftings tests. And, and um, it, it's, it's going to be amazing. We're going to learn about us. And, and our hope is that you learn about you and what makes you tick and, and who you are and where you want to be a part of. And uh, I just feel the presence of God. I do. I feel the presence of God. It's, this is the church. It's attainable. It's possible. I don't know who you are in this room tonight. I don't know what lie has been sold to you that you cannot live this life. Let me be the first to tell you and let, let, let a whole body of believers also be the ones to tell you tonight that 
it may seem so far out of reach and unattainable and how can I live like they live and how can I talk and walk and 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 have the attitude like they have sometimes it can seem so unattainable but let me tell you right now if you can just take the first step if you can just take one step at a time if you can just let God's spirit that that pool that water represented the spirit of God it represented it represented the power of God because what God can do what we cannot do God can do God is able to do He's able to take somebody that's lived a life of sin and brokenness and and bitterness and hurt and pain and he's able to take them and restore them into a into a saint of God who is saved and is going to be in heaven with us. Amen. God's able to do it. God's able to do it. I want to encourage you tonight. Don't ever feel like this is unattainable. God made it attainable for us. He said, and such were some of you, but you have been washed. He said, you've been sanctified. He said, when I touched you, when I moved on you, all of that past was washed away. That's why we're baptized in Jesus' name. All of our past and wrong has been washed away. The old man has been buried and we come up a new man able to do with God what we could not do all by ourselves. You can live for God. Come on, let, let's tell somebody in this room by the way of a hand clap, you can live for God. You can do it. It is possible. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus tonight. We thank you for your spirit that is here. We thank you for the witness of the Holy Ghost that is in this room even now. God, we pray, oh Lord, that you would touch, oh God, every saint of God that is in the building, oh Lord, who has been constant and consistent, Lord, in in perilous and changing times. I pray your strength on them tonight, but I pray, oh Lord, that you would touch every individual in this room. Oh God, let them know it is attainable and it is possible to live this life In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Clap your hands and thank the Lord for what he has done tonight. They're gonna they're gonna play. They're gonna play. You're welcome to you're welcome to just uh, you're welcome to pray. You don't have to, but you're welcome. If you need God to do something in your life, you're welcome to come to this altar. There's gonna be people here that'll pray for you. You are welcome to do that. You're welcome to come and pray. God bless you tonight. Thank you for joining us. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me mention something. Somebody said something to me last night that was so powerful. They said, you know, we we're talking about their church. Some friends of ours that came to. Uh, see us and they said you know I just love my church if I could just reach down and scoop it up and hold it I would that's how much I love my church because it's where they were saved it's where they were filled with the Holy Ghost you know it it's where they were baptized it's where they learned it's where they grew it's where they come to know God it's where they built relationships it was their church I remember years ago that that uh, when we were going to tear the old building down in Glen Ferris where I grew up, those new converts that had been set free from addictions and sin and bondage and hate and bitterness and uh, lifestyles that, that I remember they were disappointed because in their mind the church was so relative and connected to a building and a location and they were disappointed because that's where I repented. That's where I was baptized. That's where God delivered me. That's where I got married. That's where I dedicated my children. It was a love for the location. And and I think we all feel that way about the anchor and right here that we love what God's done for our families, us individually. You could probably point to moments in this building and say, God set me free. I've got a church that I can go to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is going to touch some people here tonight. I do feel something very powerful. Pastor Cody has led us into the presence of God. And uh, I remember being in Australia preaching. A man walked up to me and he said this. He said, how's Brother Gators, Brother Nehemiah doing, Sister Wendy? I'm in Australia, somebody I've never seen before. 
And I said, oh, they're doing good. And he said, I watch every service. I love what I feel there. Somebody yesterday told me, even today told me, they said our people that here at the church I pastor, they watch every service. Somebody last night came up to me and said, thank you for your podcast. They said, and thanks for archiving those old podcasts because every night I go to bed, I listen to the Anchor Church. It's powerful what God is doing here. And to think that people around the world tune in to every service, every podcast. I've had been in other cities, people walk up to me and said, I heard that message of that service and it changed my life. Thank you. I listened to the podcast of the anchor. And to think that there is a church like this in your back door in your backyard that you can come to that you're faithful whether it's Wednesdays or Sundays because you love this place you love this place amen we love this place God has done marvelous things for us here come on he's healed us let me get to the point let me get to what I want to say why he so stirred me tonight about the shallow end of the pool it's a place you can go to it's a place where healing's at I looked a few weeks ago when it was despair. It wasn't good news. Brother Sharp had an aneurysm in his brain. Aneurysm and they had given up hope. But I looked at a family that showed up together. 1365 Chamberlain Street at the anchor. And Sister Sharp and her children come over here. They came believing for a miracle. They came believing that God's going to make a way. It didn't look good at the moment that they were praying. It didn't look hopeful with it. There's just something about this place. When the report is one way, we can believe it can go another direction because there's miracles at the pool. So long, there's miracles for everybody. Whether it's a first time guest or somebody that's been here for years. We got prayer chains and prayer lines and, 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 and live at noon prayer on social media. We, we believe that this church knows how to get a hold of God. Guess what? Last Sunday, because last week hadn't been a good week for Brother Sharp, that they had decided to bring the family in and we're going to go through and, and we're going to talk about end of life. But something happened. And I'm glad to report to you today from, from the words of Sister, Sister Sharp, they are expecting Brother Sharp to have a 100% recovery. 100%. He's responding well on every level. They are putting him down in a step down. You know why? Because he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. No matter what day it is, there's a God. you're going through. There's a center of hope. There's a church house that has the power of God. Somebody say amen. So whether it's your first service, whether it's your 10,000th service, it doesn't matter. The pool is full of healing water. The pool is full of delivering water. Come on, there's salvation in the room if you need it. Lift your hands and praise Him all over the field.